Hey guys, I hope you're doing extremely well. Today we are going to discuss the starters 80 from uh, 84 from Codeshift. This is by far the easiest contest I've seen that Codeshift has given. Uh, most of the time I'm able to solve three or four questions from here, but yeah, those are tough. Today it was it was like pretty easy. But anyway, without further ado, let's get started. So the very first question is max count of one. So the problem states that uh, you are given a binary string S of length n. You have to construct a binary string X of length n such that your x i plus 1 should be equal to the previous character of x and the previous character of s uh, x and the previous character of s right uh, now the only thing that you can manipulate is the very first character right so whatever character you ri write at x naught that is up to you because your string is actually starting from 1 or the character that uh, needs to follow this particular formula is starting from 1 so the zeroth character is in your, in your control you can manipulate it as in uh, what uh, in whatever way you like so basically there are two permutations to it either you can set the first character to zero or the first character to one the rest of the string would be formulated by this particular formula so that's what you need to do over here i'm not going into details because these questions are extremely easy right so i'll just go uh, walk over the code for this one so firstly i'm taking the string s right and then i'm taking two strings s and uh, a and b right i'm initially uh, like populating with them is uh, with s or you can populate uh, them with where any characters so you can say okay this is a string at, uh, a of length n whose all characters are b uh, one this is a string b of length n all of whose characters are one so you can do it in any way you like it doesn't actually makes a difference so i'll just run this to verify if the answer is still valid anyway so what i'm doing after that is that i have two options so i can set the first character as one okay so you can see the answer is valid over here as well so you can set the first character as one or you can set the first character as zero. You'll try both of these cases right? and then you'll walk through the entire length of the string and you'll try to set uh, or you'll try to use this formula to set the rest of the indices. Right? So the only thing over here is that I need to convert the characters. So basically I have a string. A string is a combination of characters. I need to convert them back to, to an integer. So as to use the XOR operation. So that's why I'm subtracting uh, zero character from here so that they get converted into a uh, integer and then i need to convert them back to a character so i'm just checking if it's a one right if this value is a one then store one of a uh, character or zero if it's not one then store zero at the end so these are the two possibilities or these are the two valid strings i was able to uh, construct that would be a and b i just need the maximum count of ones right so i'll select that whatever the maximum count is i'm getting either it's an a or it's in b i need to print that so yeah uh, that's it so that was the question itself a uh, pretty easy one okay let, uh, let's get to the next question the next question is uh, shift and adjacent sums so the problem states that you are given array a of size n consider an array b of size n formed by sorting a in descending order so basically when you sort any array you will be get, uh, you will be getting the biggest elements at the end and they define the integer z that is equal to the last and the second last element right then they say uh, find what uh, whether there exists an arrangement of a such that for all the elements right for all the elements i i plus the next element to it i plus the right uh, the next right element to it should be less than z if such a, a, a rearrangement exists we have to print yes else we have to print no now a very simple observation is what this question is based on so let's say this is the array and we sorted it right so the biggest element has to be at the end now let's just assume that the biggest element in this uh, array let's say is 9 cool so 9 would be over here now what element would be here so there are only two choices that over here either it could be a 9 itself or some element that is less than 9 definitely there won't be any element that is greater than 9 over here because 9 is the element that is present at the last so the element present over here would be either 9 or less than 9 so there are two cases right now let's say if this element is 9 so the value of z would be 18 right or it would si simply be 2 into maximum element in that case i'll try to find out that how many diff other numbers are there in this array so since 9 is the maximum element there would be zero or more other elements as well so let's say there are uh, n nines in this right or n is the actually the uh, total number of elements so let's say c nines are there in it and the remaining elements would be n minus c now if my remaining characters or my c minus the remaining characters is greater than or equal to 2 in that case the answer does not exist because what will happen is if my c minus rem is equal to 0 or it's equal to 1 in that case i can definitely form a permutation 
वेर इन माई टू नाइन्स डोंट गेट टूगेदर सो एज सोन एज माई टू नाइन्स गेट टूगेदर इन अ परमोटेशन दे वुड रिजल्ट इन एटीन राइट बिकॉज ऑफ दिस वेरी फॉर्मूला स्टेटेड राइट ओवर दे राइट एंड दैट वुड गिव मी अ रॉन्ग आंसर और अ रॉन्ग परमोटेशन सो इन ऑर्डर टू अवॉइड इट आई हैव टू मेक श्योर दैट टू नाइन्स आर नॉट कमिंग कंजिकेटिवली सो इन ऑर्डर टू मेक श्योर ऑफ दैट वॉट आई डू इज लेट्स ए ऑल द एलिमेंट्स आर एक्स विच आई डोंट केयर अबाउट एंड देर आर सम नाइन्स राइट सो आई कैन राइट इट एज नाइन एक्स नाइन एक्स नाइन एक्स राइट एक्स इज एनी एलिमेंट विच इज नॉट नाइन ओवर हेयर नाइन राइट सो लेट्स काउंट हाउ मेनी नाइन्स आर हेयर सो वन टू थ्री फोर राइट सो दिस इज द मैक्सिमम वे आई कैन पुट नाइन्स एंड हाउ मेनी एक्स इज आर हेयर थ्री और इन जनरल यू कैन से योर नाइन्स वुड बी गार्डिंग द एक्स राइट और द मैक्सिमम एलिमेंट वुड बी गार्डिंग द एलिमेंट एक्स सो बिकॉज ऑफ दिस सर्टन कंस्ट्रेंट I can say that the maximum number of nines I can have would be x plus one, right? Or in other words, if the number of maximum elements, let's call that m, minus the remaining elements, is greater than or equal to two, in that case your answer won't exist, right? So that is one of the case wherein the elements you are having at the last and the second last position were same, right? What's the other other condition? So it could happen that Your second last element is x, some x. So let's call this uh, maybe y x. Uh, let's call this x, and this let's call the maximum element is as y. So this is the maximum element, and this is the second second max element. And we are uh, we are not sure what all elements are over here. So x y need not appear in the string. So you can say that okay, I'll do one thing. I'll shift y from here to here, and in that case, the answer definitely would exist. Right, that would definitely happen because there would be some element, let's say a over here, right, and the answer would be valid. The only case that where the answer won't exist would be where a is actually equal to x itself. So if if it's a string of all x's followed by a y, then no matter where you place this y, right, the answer would never exist because z value would actually be x plus y, right, and irrespective of uh, you placing it anywhere, it would definitely be uh, be uh, next to x itself, right. So in that scenario, the permutation or a valid permutation won't exist. So that is the only thing you need to check. So if I go through the code, in the code I have mentioned two cases. Yeah. So there are two cases over there. I was taking x and uh, x. Uh, sorry, nine and other elements over here. I have taken that there are two cases. Either it's all fours, right, or all max elements at the end, right. In that case, the second last and the uh, last element or the maximum and the second uh, second max element would be equal. In that case, I need just need to check the how many remaining elements are there. And the count of the maximum element minus the remaining elements. If it's greater than or equal to two, answer is no. Else the answer is yes. Now the other cases wherein uh, this kind of a scenario is happening, right? In this scenario, as I explained, I only need to check if the very first element of this array or the very first element of the sorted array. I had already sorted this particular array over here, right? So the uh, array is already sorted for me. So if the very first element of the sorted array, if uh, that is equal to the second uh, to the second last element. In that case, the answer does not exist, right? So in this case, I'll just check if the second last element is equal to the first element. In that case, answer does not exist, and as the answer exists, cool. So let's get to the next question. So the next is max count of one. Um, another easy question. So yeah, every every question is easy in this. Uh, so the problem states that you are given a binary string s of length n. You have to construct a. Okay, so this is already done, I guess. Uh, okay, sorry, I repeated myself, but yeah, the next problem is some or. This is also not a tough question, anyway. So the problem states that you are given a positive integer n. Find the number of triplets x, y, z such that uh, x, y, z need to be positive, so uh, they need to be greater than zero. And x plus y plus z is equal to n. Also, x or y or z is equal to n, where y uh, where this pipeline operator represents the or operation. And since this answer could be used, you need to print the modulo 10 to the power 9 plus 7. Now this uses basic uh, mathematics or some knowledge of combinatorics. I'm I'm not going to go over the basic knowledge of combinatorics here that's a different topic altogether but the simple case over here was since they are mentioned that the sum needs to be equal to the or value so what you can say is since they are saying that the sum itself needs to be equal to the or value hence whenever you have a bit that is set in any element so let's say this is a this is b this is c right now if a bit is set in a that needs a bit needs to be zero in all the other elements right because what would happen is if let's say another bit is set over here then in xor it would just be the uh, sorry in or operation it would just or out to be a single one however when if we, we would have added it right so it would have turned out to be two itself because one or zero or one 
is 1 but 1 plus 0 plus 1 is 2 right so taking this base case what we can say is we just need to calculate the number of bits that are there in the number n they are providing us so let's say there are b bits in that cool so what we can say is that we need to distribute these b bits amongst three numbers or in three buckets that is okay so that is x y z let's say so instead of a b c let's call them x y z because uh, b i was already considering over here so i have to distribute them in three buckets x y and z the only condition being that none of these buckets should be empty right so this becomes a very standard problem wherein uh, it's analogous analogous to the problems wherein the uh, author states or the problem states that you need to uh, divide balls in these buckets and all the balls are uh, differentiable also none of the buckets should remain empty so over here number of buckets actually remain three right so you have to uh, you have to divide these b balls in three buckets such that none of the buckets remain empty so that is a pretty easy thing to do in combinatorics right uh, or a very uh, very well known one you can you could have just googled uh, google this thing up and you could have got the answer so the answer in this case uh, is this case is actually b cube right oh sorry 3 to the power b minus 3 into 2 to the power b uh, minus 1 right so this is the answer that they are looking for now where does this 3 come from this is actually 3c1 or the number of ways you can distribute 3 uh, like yeah so this is 3c1 you have to uh, you have to come up with the way of uh, se uh, selecting one one item from a set of three items right so yeah this is a pretty standard standard formula if you want i can explain these formulas in detail but yeah this video is not about combinatoric this was about problem solving anyway so I hope you understood that and one other thing because uh, the value of b could actually be large so the value of b could actually go up to 60 because they, uh, they are already mentioned over here that n is up to 2 to power 60 so yeah the value of b could also go up to 60 and hence 3 to power 60 would definitely overflow so because of that reason I used my custom implementation of power function so this is my custom implementation if you want you can check out this handle and copy the code from here so because uh, I'm using the custom implementation, this is not going to overflow. Uh, one another pointer, still, uh, since we are talking of this, uh, that whenever you are uh, using these kind of operations or, or on bits, right? One silly mistake we often tend to do is that we actually write one shifted i times. But the problem over here is that one as it is written. So if I'm writing one shifted i, uh, I times, right? So it actually means that integer one is being shifted i times. Now, as soon as your i exceeds the value of 31 or 32 right it uh, would get overflowed so in that uh, because in order to avoid that you should always use a one ll over here cool so let's get to the next problem that is okay i think we have discussed this uh, okay digit operation yeah so uh, another problem so the problem states that you are given array a and b consisting of n strings and a positive integer k for all strings from uh, from uh, for all the strings in a and b you have to make uh, you have to do some operations such that your ai becomes equal to bi right now what are the operations you can do so the operations you can do are such that you can pick any character in any string of a and any character in another string of a and you can swap them right and this operation would actually cost zero so you can do any number of these operations you're not even bothered about the number of operations you, you can do over here and the other kind of operation is that you can replace or any character in A with any other another character. The goal at the end is to make the strings in A equal to the strings in B. Uh, this was a question. This is uh, this doesn't use any sort of DSC or something. It's just an implementation or a very basic implementation. So the basic uh, or the greedy approach for this is that you can say that if a character is all already correct in A, right? So okay, I'll just explain it in brief doesn't needs much explanation but anyway so if a character let's say ai if it's already correct or aij if it's already correct there's no point in changing this right however if a character aij is not equal to bij right? in that case what you can say is that you you'll start storing these kind of characters that are not correct so you'll store this value so whatever value over here is that let's say this value is x so you'll store x now in what kind of data structure you, you, you need to store it you can use anything i used a multi set over here you can use a multi uh, you can use a ordered ordered set an ordered set whatever you like just make sure that it's not something that uh, cannot handle duplicates right so anything can be used for this you can even use an ordered map with some logics 
so once you are able to store this x you'll briefly know that how many uh, numbers are there, uh, there in this particular array right or how many numbers are there which are not arranged in the perfect manner right then start another loop now again start a loop from i equal to uh, 0 to n and for j equal to the size of or uh, ai th string right then check what was the value that is required required value at a of ij right if this value is equal to the current value itself so let's say that would basically mean if your aij is equal to bij then it's fine this is fine i need not do anything for this this is already correct however if aij is not equal to bij then that means that you need to replace or you need to come up with a character which you can replace over here right so for that you can check this uh, store we, wherein we are already stored all the all the values which are not at the correct places right so if such a value exists or if bij exist in this store in that case we can pull up this value from here and store it right but as soon as we store it so we have to make sure that the store also knows that one of the values have been removed so that we don't remove the same value multiple number of times so we'll just erase uh, bij one occurrence or let's say one occurrence of bij from the store from store right and in case bij is not present in the store at all in that case we will decrement a k because if you remember k are the num k is the operation in which we can uh, uh, consider an element right and we can change it so in case the store is empty in that case i'll definitely have to uh, uh, perform my other kind of operation k right so i'll subtract k uh, in order to check that okay i'm i've performed this kind of operation at the end both of the strings a i and a and would be equal to b i'll just need to check if my k has now become uh, negative that means i performed more number of times than i was allowed to so if my k is less than 0 see out no else see out yes so yes that is the code for this okay so the code simply is uh, as i told you so i made a uh, multi set uh, wrongs right wherein i'll start storing the values so one condition also is that the length you cannot change the length right you can either replace it replace the character or swap the character in neither of these operations the length actually gets changed right so if the length of the ith string in a is not equal to the bth string uh, is, is not equal to ith string in b in that case the answer definitely does not exist you can directly print a no right uh, in other case you will add the value in wrongs only if ai the value at the aij is not equal to bij right and then you'll start tra uh, traversing again and over here you'll check that if the values are not equal so firstly you'll check that if the required value is available in wrongs so if wrongs contain bij right in that case just erase this wrong from there and i'll consider that i have already used it once right or i already uh, swapped it with the required value else i have to do the sort of operation i already told you about or i'll have to replace this value with the required value at then just in, uh, check if k is greater than equal to 0 then yes else no so yeah that was it for this session i think uh, i don't know why they made it so easy like generally i expect at least the third and fourth problem to be tough but yeah this time i was able to do it without pen and paper so yeah definitely it was too easy cool guys i hope you were uh, able to understand the concepts that were required in this in this uh, in these questions if you have any doubts let me know in the comment section below cool guys bye bye thanks a lot